So far, we have analyzed this linear transformation with respect to two different bases. Our first choice was rather arbitrary, and from that choice we learned that the matrix that represents the linear transformation in the component space with respect to some arbitrary basis will be different from the matrix that defines it. The next basis that we considered was the standard basis, and we learned that it's the one special basis for which, that, for which the matrix representing the linear transformation in the component space is actually the same matrix as the matrix that defines the linear transformation. Well, we will now consider a very special basis, more special than any other basis, and as our discussion unfolds, and as you're beginning to notice the special features of this particular basis, you should be continuously thinking, what is it specifically that's making this basis so special? And you will notice that this particular basis has square roots in it, and it's only because I didn't think uh, far enough ahead when I came up with this linear transformation. If I had a chance to do it all over again, I'd pick a linear transformation where you don't get any square roots. But in any case, there is nothing wrong with square roots, so let's work with square roots. All right, so now let's pursue the same strategy we've been practicing all along, which is applying the linear transformation to each one of the basis elements, decomposing the result with respect to the same basis, and putting the resulting coefficients as the columns in this matrix. That's the strategy. So let's start with the first one. I'm almost out of space, so we'll just draw an arrow and apply this transformation to the first basis element. Let's call them E1, E2, E3. And we will have the sum, the difference, and the last entry multiplied by 3. So the sum is, of course, 2 plus square root of 2. The difference is square root of 2. And the last entry is 0. Okay, now we have to take this vector, that's not the vector that goes here, and decompose it with respect to the same basis. And you will notice that it's actually surprisingly simple, because this vector right here is exactly this vector times square root of 2. Do you notice that? If you multiply the first entry by square root of 2, the square root of 2 becomes 2, and the 1 becomes square root of 2, so we're left with 2 plus square root of 2, exactly this entry. And of course, this entry times square root of 2 is square root of 2. So this vector right here is square root of 2 times the first basis element E1. So the coefficients of decomposition are, of course, square root of 2, 0, 0. Because uh, this vector being square root of 2 of this vector it's the only one that we need for decomposition. And the corresponding coefficient is square root of 2. So we have square root of 2, 0, 0, because only the first basis element is needed. Now let's do the same thing with the next one. And we're, of course, of course getting 2 minus square root of 2. 2 minus square root of 2. And then the difference, which is minus square root of 2, this minus this, minus square root of 2, and 0. Okay, and this vector, despite its outward complexity, is also simple to decompose with respect to this basis because it is minus square root of 2 times this vector. Take a moment to see that this vector is minus square root of 2 of this one. So the resulting coefficients for the decomposition are 0, minus square root of 2, 0. So maybe you're beginning to realize what is it that's making this basis special and are able to put it in words because there's a perfect combination of words that's describing this basis. And finally, 0, 0, 1 becomes 0, 0, 3, and the corresponding coefficients are, of course, 0, 0, 3, because all you need to decompose this vector with respect to this basis is the last element of the basis, and we need 3 of that element. So 0, 
zero, three. And we're done. And I think you would agree with me that of all the matrices you see on the board, this one is the simplest because it's a diagonal matrix. And can you pinpoint what is it that's so special about this basis that results in the diagonal matrix? So you should probably pause the video and if you don't see it already, give it some thought because I'm about to reveal what it is. So what's special about these vectors? Well, there's nothing particularly special about these vectors in the absolute sense, but there is something very special about these vectors with respect to this particular linear transformation. Namely, these vectors are the eigenvectors of this transformation. This basis consists entirely of the eigenvectors of the transformation we're dealing with. It's called an eigenbasis, and it's very special. And one of the things that are, that's special about it is that the matrix that represents the linear transformation with respect to that basis is always diagonal. And it's very special numbers that actually appear on the diagonal. So we have always emphasized that while all bases are created equal, a particular problem that you're working with may make one of the bases better than the rest. It can make one of them very special. And one of the most special bases that you can choose in any problem is the eigenbasis, the basis consisting of the eigenvectors of the linear transformation you're dealing with. So that's what we did here. This is a perfect example of a particular problem dictating one's choice of basis. So let's make sure that these are indeed eigenvectors of the linear transformation. Well, we kind of saw it because when this was the input to the linear transformation, this was the output. It was square root of two times this vector. In other words, it was square root of two times the input vector. The output vector was square root of two times the input vector. And so the output vector was an eigenvector of this linear transformation with the corresponding eigenvalue square root of two. And that's why the square root of two is here. It's the eigenvalues of the linear transformation that appear on the diagonal in this representation. And that is because when a vector that you're trying to decompose is a straight multiple of one of the vectors in the basis, decomposition is very easy. You just take that multiple of the corresponding vector from the basis and you don't need any of the other elements in that basis. So it's just one non-zero coefficient, the one corresponding to the vector of which it is a multiple. The same thing happened over here. The output was minus square root of two times the input. That's why this negative square root of two ended up in the second diagonal position. And similarly for the third one, this was an eigenvector. This was an eigenvector because the output was three times the input under this linear transformation. And because this vector was three times one of the basis elements, we have a three in, in the third position on the diagonal. So the values of the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues corresponding to the eigenvectors that are the elements of the basis in that very order. So the message, the overwhelming message here is that the problem you're working with would make some of the bases better, more special, or more convenient than others. The problem dictates the choice of the basis. And when you choose the eigenbasis, you will end up with a diagonal matrix representing that linear transformation. And diagonal matrices are very nice. They're easy to multiply by, they're easy to invert. It's just not just easy, but also very quick. There are only a few non-zero entries and they also have many other advantages. And I think that simply by considering this example, it's clear that the statement I'm making here with respect to this matrix is quite general. That this would be true not just for this transformation, for vectors in Rn, but for any kind of vectors and for any linear transformation. If you choose a basis that consists of the eigenvectors of the transformation, the matrix that represents this transformation 
will be diagonal with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Here you saw it by example, but in one of the next videos I will actually demonstrate it for any linear transformation on any linear space. And that will be a very good exercise in generality, in making general arguments in linear algebra. So that's, we'll, that will be one of the things that we'll do next. But I also want to leave you with a question that not so complicated to answer. So you notice that the eigenbasis delivers a diagonal matrix. But could there be a basis that delivers an even simpler matrix? Could there be a basis for which the matrix that represents the linear transformation is even simpler? Well, what can be simpler than a diagonal matrix? I guess only the identity matrix. So could there be a basis such that the matrix, can we always choose a basis? Or can we sometimes choose a basis? Or perhaps could we never choose a basis so that the matrix representing the linear transformation with respect to that basis is the identity matrix? That's a very good question to think about.